What's good, Josh? Bull Ross back at it again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 WWE superstars who bravely stood up to Vince McMahon. Now, it's not that many individuals that will stand up to Vince McMahon himself, but the ones that have, you gotta have, uh, I guess you can say, a set of cojones to stand up to the almighty Vince. And sometimes that can benefit you. It shows Vince that you're passionate about what you're standing up to him about and sometimes it depending on how you deliver that information it could ultimately hurt you and you may end up getting punished for it uh by your booking like you and may end up, may end up in horrible situations booking wise your character may end up getting destroyed on tv because of it so it's really a give or take depending on how much it really depends on how much vince values you as a commodity to the program where he'll it depends on how much he'll let you say to him you know it just depends like for example roman reigns can say certain things to vince like i i'm not really about to do that and i don't know about that vince I, I i think we need to switch it up compared to someone lower on the card you know like uh i'm just using an example like uh, uh maybe like a grayson waller if vince was still around it would be hard for Grayson Waller to really tell Vince to change his character or do this or do that. He may be able to suggest it, but it would be hard for Vince to really take him, you know, probably not. I wouldn't say take him seriously. Well, I, I would say that because Vince would seem like the type of like, he'll hear you and then he'll just go on about his day. You know what I'm saying? So a uh, Roman Reigns addressing something to Vince compared to like a Grayson Waller addressing something to Vince. You can tell who would actually you know who vince would listen to more i'm just using that as an example but we're gonna check out some of the moments where people said nah vince i'm not doing that shit appreciate all the love and support let's get right into it man vince mcmahon is notoriously one of the scariest individuals in pro wrestling mcmahon is truly an enigma and wrestlers past and present have spoken out about how daunting interactions with mcmahon can be the majority of wrestlers have allowed mcmahon to micromanage them but certain wrestlers have shown no intimidation when it comes to McMahon and have stood up for what they believe is right. Yeah. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 W. Because guess what? A lot of times, sometimes, well, I wouldn't say a lot of times, but some of those individuals knew how valuable they were to Vince. The WWE wrestlers who stood up to Vince McMahon. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. Vince is and about us the on dollars. Facebook for exclusive if you're valuable to him, channel, he'll listen to you more. Shorts. Number 10, The Shield. Oh. After debuting in WWE in late 2012, The Shield were on an impressive run, but it was set to come to a halt at the 2013 Elimination Chamber event. Initial creative plans call for The Shield to lose a six man tag match against John Cena, Ryback, and Sheamus, and the plan finish was to see Cena stand tall. Oh, Dean Ambrose, so Roman Reigns, and happen. Seth Rollins knew that this was the wrong finish. The finish wouldn't have benefited anyone and would have no. ultimately buried the Shield just before WrestleMania 29. Yeah, it's been well documented how the Shield reacted to these creative plans as the decorated trio decided to boldly take a visit to Vince McMahon's office and they stood up to the creative direction WWE were taking. The Shield logically explained why the creative decision didn't work, and amazingly, McMahon actually listened to what the trio had to say and even changed the finish. The Shield would win the six-man tag match which worked. and would remain unbeaten for the next several months on WWE. And that's crazy. Those three guys are at the top of the wrestling industry because of that one and because of that potential decision right there. Didn't kill their momentum. Crazy. Television. Number nine, The Godfather. In 1999, The Godfather was struggling to find a place in the card, and as a result, he went to Vince McMahon to vent his frustrations. McMahon stated that it's sometimes beneficial to be off TV, but Godfather clapped back at McMahon as he questioned what McMahon was saying. As a result, the former Intercontinental Champion was booked in a one-minute squash on TV wow. as a clear punishment for standing I, up to the I boss. He I just told y'all, sometimes it can benefit you to stand up to them, and then sometimes you do that and then you get punished for it bro in comparison the shield had a higher ceiling than what they had planned for the godfather so who's making them more money potentially put some insight into this stories on with briscoe and bradshaw so i, I go under and talk to vince and i, I explain my side to vince he goes you know charles 
sometimes it's better not to be on TV than it is to be on TV. But I don't hear that. I don't. I don't hear that. I keep going. No, I'll, I. I got found. I don't know. Once again, Charles. Sometimes it's better not to be on TV than it is to be on TV. Don't want to hear it. Okay, okay, all right. I'll put you on TV. You want to be on TV? I'll wow. put you on TV. So the new car comes up, right? Godfather, Triple H, no hose. One minute. Wow. <laughs> Number eight. That's crazy. He was telling them, just let it go, Charles. And he's like, nah, all right, I'll put you on TV. And it ain't nothing worse than getting squashed in one minute. Rob Van Dam. Rob Van Dam has always been a wrestler who's been willing to go against the norm and remove himself from situations that he feels uncomfortable in. In the 2000s, Vince McMahon wanted RVD to attend the annual tribute to the troop show in Iraq, but RVD told McMahon that he had no plans of going to the event. On his podcast, oh, wow. this is what the former WWE champion had to say about the infamous act of defiance. I was doing about it, and other wrestlers are coming up to me saying, Man, Rob, I respect you for saying no. Like, I don't want to go either, but I can't say no. I'm not Damn. RVD, dude. Why do I always hear that? Like, there's something in my contract that says I can get no heat. You know what I mean? I just have principles, and I'm not going to be a puppet, and you know, that works for and against me. But I'm here saying that Christmas break, I'll be in California, wherever the hell I lived at the time. I guess that was it. Anyway, it was a subject like, are they not going to let you go? I was getting mad. What do you mean, let me not go? Like I'm a prisoner. Damn. According to the former head of talent relations for WWE, Jim Ross, on his podcast, RVD saying no to the trip resulted in him receiving substantial backstage heat. Of course, there was backstage heat. Vince looked at it as an unpatriotic act, more or less. Mm. And look, I admire and I always have Vince McMahon's patriotism and the United States should love him because he pays a load of taxes and I know he's legit about his love of Dr. Martin Luther King. Amen to that. But you know, sometimes you can take this stuff too far. Here's the deal. Here's how I would have addressed that. Vince, he doesn't want to go. He's not comfortable going. Number seven, yeah. Mark Henry. And that's crazy. That's... That's so crazy, bro. That's crazy. He said, I ain't going. And Vince, no, Vince being Vince. Oh, you won't. You won't. I. Right. <laughs> That's wild. That's a wild. Back in 2011, a prank on Mark Henry yep, right fired in a major way. And it resulted in Henry confronting Vince McMahon and almost quitting on the spot. Henry was supposed to wrestle a dark match against Sin Cara, but Cara never appeared for the match. And this left Henry utterly embarrassed. According to Henry during an interview with Chris Van Vliet, Henry expressed why the incident made him angry and the Hall of Famer had a completely valid argument. Mm -hmm. I felt disrespected. I felt trivialized. Out of all the work that I did, like all the sacrifices, you people say, oh, you got paid a lot of money. You know what, man? I didn't get paid enough money to dummy mm. down my pride and respect as a man. Mm. Ain't no price for that. And when that happened, I felt like, okay, I'm expendable. I'm useless to them. They don't respect me. Being mm -hmm. that I'm a man and I was able to say my piece to Vince and everybody involved, like, just know who I am because that won't ever happen again. If it does, like us talking will not be an option. Mm. Henry went on to state that he used the anger from the incident to fuel the acclaimed Hall of Pain character, yeah. which would arguably end up being Henry's most successful and celebrated run in WWE. Yeah. Number six, Mick Foley. Mick Foley and Vince McMahon have always had an interesting relationship behind the scenes. And at one point during Foley's stint as a commentator on SmackDown, Foley had enough of McMahon's poor behavior and management, and this ultimately led to him exiting WWE in favor of TNA. Mm -hmm. Foley and McMahon would embark in a heated confrontation due to Foley giving his notice to the company, which Foley detailed on his podcast. Sure, I know. officially gave the notice. Gave the notice. I just, I made it really clear that if that was part of the job, I didn't want any part of it. And, uh, you know, Vince, uh, you know, he tried to... I mean, this is, I mean, this... Uh, this is where I'm hesitant because, you know, Vince has, you know, he's imagined going through a tough time. You know, yeah, I tried sure. to text him for his birthday and that's the WWE number. So it's not Doesn't working work. anymore. Yeah. But he, I said, well, I said, Vince, what's the end game here? If I work hard at this for 10 years and I get as good as I can possibly be, though, you'll treat me the way you treat JR. Oh. And then he gets about this close. He goes, you think I've been bad to him? I said, I think you've made his life a lot more difficult than it needed mm. to be. Number five, Chris Damn. Jericho. And here's the thing. There's been countless reports of how Vince has treated JR. For sure. For sure, it has not been the best. It hasn't. It definitely hasn't. He's made fun of him. 
for what he's, you know, his medical condition, all types of shit. He has not really treated him the best. And he is the one of the most important integral parts of the success of the WWE in the Attitude Era because he was the voice that we heard on our television sets capturing those iconic moments. So, makes a fair point there, Mick Foley. Even though Chris Jericho is an AEW talent, he's still... Ex yeah, Chris is dealing with a... Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, he's in some hot water right now. We don't know how true the allegations are, but he's he's in his own uh, <laughs> sinking ship right now. Hopefully they can figure that all out. <laughs> Extremely close with Vince McMahon, with Jericho even going on record to say that he could text McMahon at any time of the day and he would be guaranteed a reply. The relationship between the two hasn't always been great, however, as according to Jericho, the two had an argument that was so severe that Jericho wanted to punch McMahon in the face. The story goes that when Jericho was picked to host the show Downfall, he kept it private as he didn't want WWE or McMahon interfering. However, when Jericho was on the cover of The Hollywood Reporter, McMahon was furious that Jericho didn't tell him. According to Jericho, McMahon insisted that he wasn't allowing Jericho to host the show and the two had a verbal back and forth which included McMahon claiming that Jericho was fired. The Damn. two eventually worked things out and Jericho was allowed to host the show with McMahon's blessing. Number That's 4. Crazy. Mustafa Ali it's not always main event talent that have had the courage to stand up to Vince McMahon as Mustafa yeah. Ali earned a ton of respect from his peers and fans when he stood up for himself in an argument with McMahon. During the development stages of Ali's infamous New American persona, McMahon pitted something to Ali that Ali would have never in a million years be comfortable in doing. His refusal led to a confrontation between himself and McMahon and McMahon was so furious with Ali's act of defiance that he was pulled from WWE TV indefinitely. Yeah. It was reported following the argument that Ali had requested his WWE release, which at the time was outright rejected by WWE. Mm -hmm. Number 3. Nails And Nails had one of the most controversial- now, this one, we've seen a video about. This is like the only person I know that's actually attacked Vince. Like, legitimately put the beats on Vincent Kennedy McMahon. It's the only person I know of that's it's been reported that put the beats to Vince, bro. Legit. <laughs> Special firings of all time, as he was fired for literally assaulting Vince McMahon. Yeah. In late 1992, Nails confronted McMahon in his office over pay dispute, and according to Bret Hart, Nails cornered McMahon in his office, screamed at him for over 15 minutes. It was believed that this verbal tirade escalated into Nails knocking McMahon over in his chair and choking him. This Hart picture. offered some more insight into the crazy incident in his autobiography. <laughs> Kevin Nails cornered Vince McMahon in his office and screamed at him for 15 minutes about the, all the lies he'd been told. His yelling got so loud I got goosebumps up my back as I listened from down the hall. Suddenly there was a loud crash. Nails had knocked Vince over his chair choking him violently until Lanza, Slaughter and a swarm of agents teamed up to pull him off. Damn. Nails walked out and immediately called the police and accused Vince of making a sexual advance toward him. Wow. Vince was charged with sexual assault but the charges were dropped soon after. Some of the boys actually admired Nails for snatching Vince while covering his tracks to not get charged himself. Wow. The last thing Vince wanted was another scandal. Number That's two. That's crazy. So he's choking this nigga. They get him off him from choking Vince McMahon. Pow. Pow. Stop it. Pow. So to cover his tracks, he calls the police to tell them, hey, this nigga Vince sexually assaulted me. Even though he was choking this nigga out. That's crazy. Fucking crazy. Brock Lesnar. Oh, yeah. Well, the WrestleMania that 34 makes sense. main event was met with widespread criticism from fans and critics alike. Yeah. The main event saw Brock Lesnar collide with Roman Reigns for the Universal title, and there was no demand to see the matchup, especially in the main event slot of the biggest no. show of the year. Due to fan resentment towards the match, the live crowd turned on both men as they booed and chanted for other wrestlers that weren't even in the match. Lesnar was absolutely livid with the response uh -huh. to the matchup, and when he got backstage, the title he threw his item. title directly at Vince McMahon, <laughs> and it was reported that a full-blown argument between the two took place. Whilst the argument was said to be intense, 
the two eventually made amends and the two have managed to maintain a strong relationship mm -hmm. over the past five years. And number one, The Undertaker. Mm. There's no greater bond in pro wrestling than the bond between The Undertaker and Vince McMahon. The two see each other as family and it came as no surprise when McMahon inducted the dead man into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2022. Yeah. A friendship aside, the two have butted heads in the past, most notably in 1997 when the dead man felt utterly betrayed by McMahon. When the Montreal Screwjob went down, the dead man was mm -hmm. bewildered. The Undertaker had a great relationship with Bret Hart and had no idea that McMahon planned on screwing Hart out of the title. Mm -hmm. The Undertaker wanted answers and he reportedly confronted McMahon and demanded to know what on earth McMahon was thinking. According to Hart during an interview with Sports Illustrated, the dead man was pounding on McMahon's door, insisting that McMahon explained himself to the locker room. I punched out Vince McMahon in the locker room, but the only reason Vince was in the locker room was because of Taker. Undertaker pounded on Vince's door after the screw job. He said, get your ass down to that dressing room and explain yourself. And Vince wouldn't have listened to anybody else. Yeah. I wrote Taker a letter when I left. Hart said, you have to be the voice of the dressing room and the leader now that I'm gone. And that's what he was, bro. If there's anybody in heat, the Undertaker was truly uh, a locker room leader, bro. Truly a locker room leader that was all about making sure the business get done correctly. And he had no qualms of charging up Vince himself when he felt like what went down with Brett was not cool. That's what you call respect. And guess what? What? Guess what? Vince had to listen. Even though that's his employee, we all, everybody knows The Undertaker, you know, Mark, his, 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 what he was building even at that time, they knew he was he was cut from a different cloth. And Vince respected him. And a lot of people in that locker room respected him. So, hey, man, if there's anybody that's going to check Vince, it's going to be Mark Calloway or a.k.a. The Undertaker, man. Comment down below. Let me know, man. Some other videos you guys want me to check out. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Roll to 150k, and I'm still getting speedy YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.